What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and I'm your host for this series on how to set up a home lab. And in this episode, we're going to be covering the Waza agent. If you are here just for this video, the Waza agent is a standalone video as long as you have a Waza server set up. So if you're not following this series and you just want to know how to install the Waza agent, stay here. You can still do so. But if you're curious and you're setting up a home lab, we have covered this from top to bottom where the check marks are the things that we've covered. And you can click on our channel below and go to our home lab playlist and watch that all the way through if you so care. All right, guys, pre-edit Ape here. There's a couple things I wanted to cover because I don't feel like I was very clear at the beginning of the video on what this video is going to cover. So first of all, they do have a website with proof of concept guides that you can follow to test out your agents to make sure that they are alerting and monitoring things that you care about and that you want to monitor. So I'd recommend to dig into this deeper past this video. But what we're gonna cover this video is I'm going to show you uh, this site. We are going to cover how to install the agent, how to investigate the host triggered alerts, what they mean and how to find out the information on what the alert is concerned with. So why it triggered, how to test triggers and see the event you triggered. We will show in this video as well as how to create dashboards to monitor those specific events that you're concerned with. All right, let's get on with the video. have a website for every video that we post with step-by-step -step instructions links to what we use for resources pictures that you can make bigger as well as copyable commands so if our videos ever go too fast or you get a little confused you can always click the link to the article and the video description down below to do it at your own pace the next thing you need to do is decide on what server or virtual machine that you want to monitor with Waza. In the case of this episode, we are going to monitor our tail scale machine because inherently it's not you know, insecure and it uses a VPN and it's relatively safe, but it might be something you want to monitor to see if people are attempting to SSH into this, get into your client or whatever virtual machine that you may have exposed to the internet or in your DMZ, etc. So what you need to do is log into your Waza server, which we set up in the previous episode, episode 15. So if you have not done so, and now you're just following along with Waza, please go follow that video and then come back to this one. So we're gonna click deploy a new agent at the top left. And then in here, we need to pick what operating system we're installing the agent on. In our case, it's an x84 system and it's Ubuntu Linux, which is Debian based. So we're gonna do this bottom left one. And then we need to input the IP address that the agent will use to communicate with the server. So we're talking about agent to server. In this case, the agent needs to talk to our website, which is also the Waza server at the IP address, which you can see in our URL. And then the agent name can stay the same. We don't need to rename this agent. And then if you have different existing groups, you could assign that here, which you may do if you, um, have different customers, you've categorized your devices by DMZ, not DMZ, private, not private, whatever, you would have created groups in the dashboard and then assign them here. And then you can see step four is it takes all that information we've given it and put it in a nice, beautiful command script that we can just copy in to uh, our servers, CLI, our command line interface, and then it'll start installing this package. So I'm gonna click my Windows key, type CMD, open this up. I will make this bigger for you as well as copy that command. One, two, three, four, five, six, just using my control and plus keys and typing SSH at the username that you have installed on that server for whatever that user is. And then the IP address of that server. In our case, it's 241. I'm gonna click enter. It's gonna ask me for that user's password and we are in. So all I have to do is right click and then that will paste the install script that's created on the website. And then because it needs pseudo privileges, it's gonna ask me for the password and we can see that it's been installed. So if we go back over to the website, there is one more thing to start the agent. We need to reload the daemons that were installed, enable the Waza agent in the system CTL, and then start that Waza agent so it will persist with boot ups. Now this may take a couple minutes, so go ahead and pause this video until yours is done and come back when you're ready. Okay, so that was it. That was super quick this time. Not a big deal. 
So now that we're done with that, we're gonna go back to our dashboard here and we are gonna wait just a little while. So go ahead and pause this video. Eventually your agent will show up here on the top left and then we can discuss further. Okay, now that that's been installed, we can see that our agent is now present on our dashboard. So we are going to click on our agent. We can see a list of them, click on it again, and then here it is. So we can see that it's already doing scans on the system. It's looking for vulnerability reports. It's looking uh, you know, for top tactics, defense, evasions. So if we click on this list, we kind of get a historical record of what might be going on. You can see that these are all dated today and pretty much right now because once it's installed, it's gonna go through and do a quick scan. And then you can open this up and get a good idea of uh, this specific incident on this specific machine as well as the rule ID. So there's a couple things in here. The agent ID could be important to you. The agent IP address, the index at which it pulled this information is good when we query things later. Uh, and then the description. So the rule description is an important one. And you can do further Googling on this if you're unsure what it means. And then this document provides a description guidance for establishing a secure configuration posture for Ubuntu Linux based on a CIS benchmark. So you get an idea of where this is coming from and why it thinks it's bad. And then you can do research on those events, right? So let me just look at my notes here real quick just to make sure I'm not missing anything that I wanna cover in this video. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys an example. So if I go to uh, discover, this is like the search query page within Waza where you can look for events on any specific device. So we can see that we have an agent IP address, an agent name. Uh, we can see the agent name is Tailscale, which is true, right? That's what we installed this on. So we know where this event is coming from. But if I search like this, I'm gonna grab this rule here real quick and put it in here and do rule ID 5716 and just do a whole search across all my indexes on Waza. We can see there's no event that has occurred for this. And this event would be for a failure to log in via SSH more than three times within an hour. So we're gonna test this out. So if I just, whoops, go back here. And I have a uh, virtual machine set up with Ubuntu. You could do this on your own device and then go into the virtual machine and like, you know, remove the IP address or whatever. But just for testing purposes, I thought this would be easiest. So I'm gonna do SSH learn at 192.168.50.240, whoops, 241, click enter, fingerprint, yes, and I'm gonna fail to put in the password, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five and permission denied. And I'm gonna do it one more time just to be on the safe side to make sure that we get an index of this, of this issue, right? Okay, and so we've failed about six times now to get into this. And we wanna check to see if that event has occurred. So I could paste this real quick and see if it has queried it yet, and it has. So look how fast that is with the active agent scanning. So we can see it highlights what we search for, rule ID 5760. So if I go down here and I can see the full log shows that the Tailscale SSH, SSHD failed password for the user learned from this IP address, my computer's IP address over this port of SSH failed. So now we have an SSH authentication failed. So we have proof that someone is trying to get into this virtual machine. So now we have oversight. So you can actually like, I'm going to not cover this just to keep these videos simple, but if there's plenty of great YouTube videos, an hour plus long online on YouTube that show you how to create alerts in like your email or to your Splunk chat room, but they're kind of complicated and they have some issues. So you might just want to like come in here and do a search or have an oversight, or you could look in doing alerts and digging into Waza more if you want. 
but this just allows you to search for certain things that you care about. So if I go back to the home page here and I also go back to my agent and I click on it again, we can now see that we have some top tactics that have been attempted credential access. So if I go in here, I use the example 5760, but you can also see there is a couple other types in here. User missed the password more than one time. So that's just saying it's been missed more than one time. This is saying it actually failed. And so you can look through these and now get a rule ID that you may want to start monitoring or add to an alert or go into more depth within, uh, within Waza, right? And so, you know, you could create, or that's kind of, I guess the point that I'm trying to make, but there is one more thing that I just remembered or looking at my notes that I want to go over as well. So if you want to create a dashboard, which I think is the easier way to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to type your rule ID, maybe the device name in here. So you could do like rule ID and uh, you could grab the host name like this and click enter and then create a more specific rule. So using a Boolean, an and, an or, you know, and this, a table, whatever, you can look into DQL language online and figure out how to use this. But now I can save this as a query. So I could do SSH failed login attempts and click save. So if I wanna create a dashboard now to monitor this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to dashboards, create a new dashboard. And then in here, since I saved that, I can add a dashboard from the top and I can see SSH failed login attempts. And here we go. And it's here. So now I can have like this live feed of things that are going on. I can edit this search and then I can, you know, save it and change it if I need to update it. Um, I can go in here and edit the panel title. There's more stuff in here. I can maximize the panel, inspect the panel, delete the panel. And then you could add other things in here. So like you could add different queries that you've created. You could go in here and you could create gauges or pie charts with uh, all the total types of alerts that have been you know, hit. And you can go in here and then you can give it a custom label, aggregation counts and sums. You can add buckets and look into these, so on and so forth. Save that. And then like pie chart. Pie chart like that. Click save and return. And then you can add it and build out these custom dashboards based on the analytics or the, the stats, right? The history that you want to monitor and then just have this running or have this open. And that's what a lot of people do in the professional world is you will essentially have this live feed of events that will come into a specific dashboard that you care about investigating. Uh, they might have a way to close out alerts and stuff in there, but that's kind of advanced and really not necessary for a home lab. You just kind of want high level oversight. And if you see an issue, you might want to go and fix that issue. So that is kind of the main bulk of what we are talking about here. But, you know, if you care to go into this and go through all the events, obviously, you're not probably going to handle 649 mediums, but you might want to try to cover some of the highs or cover some of the criticals. So you could go into the critical events and read about them and you know, filter for the value if you would like. Google, do some OSINT of what the actual uh, issue is referring to, and then try to mitigate them there. So like, let's just filter for value. Okay, sorry about that. So just doing a little bit of refresher for my own self. So what you want to do is if you want to start fixing these issues, you probably aren't gonna be able to cover all of them, but you probably want to get the criticals and depending on what the highs are, look into those. So if we click, click on the highs and then we go to inventory, we can see a list of what those highs are and what we may need to do to fix them. So just on the far left, we can inspect the vulnerability details and then go down here and look at the vulnerability description. Like in the Linux kernel, the following vulnerability has been resolved of module add buffer overflow check in said module, if the buffer happens to be small, even for the first SN, SN printf call, 
the you know len parameter will become negative and the str parameter uh could allow for a buffer overflow check for the first right so kind of above most people's heads probably but you would do some research like here's a whole bunch of vulnerability references you could click on them read about them and then figure out what you need to do to solve them so this also helps you just audit your devices pretty easily figure out what needs to be fixed why it needs to be fixed through research and then you can have a machine that's just a little bit safer especially you know you'd want to take a lot of these events more seriously if you are exposing this to the internet which this allows you to figure out what you need to do so i hope that makes sense and i hope this video was conclusive and in Informative enough for you guys to learn and do some research of your own to you know talk to these skills but especially if you have lots of events come in learn how to use the Cori le learn how to read events learn how to figure out why something's bad because as you do like sock rolls and engineering rolls, those are all questions that are going to need to be answered. And if you can navigate this seam, you could probably navigate a lot of other seams with little, with a much lower learning curve and kind of know what to look for, where to go and what to read up on. But that's it for this video. My name is Abe. This is LTH signing off.